Okay, we have uh, earlier seen the problems related to using the uh, energy flux method for determining the uh, sediment transport rate. What I have uh, done here is using both the energy flux method and the Liu observation method and uh, kind of uh, making a comparison. It is not exactly a comparison, uh, maybe both uh, simultaneously for a given particular coast on the assumption that uh, the measured velocity under the Leo method is available. So, you assume that and then try to evaluate <coughs> both the methods. So, that is what I have uh, tried to do and also I want to get just uh, highlight the importance of considering the angles, angle of the I mean the wave direction as well as the orientation of the course. This is very important and this is where many of the students they make a mistake and then they land up once they make a mistake in this uh, direction. You, you see that the PLS parameter is directly a function of breaking angle, you understand. Once you make a, a mistake which is very common in uh, assigning the direction of the wave with respect to the shore normal. If you make any mistake in that, then you are in for trouble because the estimate can be either uh, uh, an overestimate, too much of overestimate, or too much of underestimate. So that is why, in order to demonstrate that, I am just uh, uh, I have taken this problem. So all these uh, parameters are given to you. So for example, deep water wave height is available monthly, monthly mean wave height. Let us take a monthly mean wave. Height. But if you have everyday wave height, then every day you can calculate the uh, wave height and then take its average. Okay. So now what, uh, what we have assumed here is the data is H0 that is the deep water wave height is given, the wave period is given, the, uh, the theta naught with respect to geographic north is also indicated there. And in addition, the measured velocity under the Leo observation okay. that is you have uh, the dye patch movement of the dye patch. Please recollect what we have seen under the Leo observation method uh, uh, describing the Leo method of uh, uh, the littoral environment observation method for getting the for deriving the PLS parameter from measurements. So now uh, uh, on the assumption that these values are already available for a particular course, then these are indicated maybe monthly average okay. or monthly average or maybe it is a, a representative uh, measurement for a particular month. Okay. Very often it becomes very difficult to continuously measure all these uh, parameters. So they be, uh, very often they consider okay, within 15 days in a month or maybe for 10 days within a month they take the average and then they say okay this would this could be the probable uh, uh, range or probable probable value of the mean value of uh, your leo velocity okay that is the movement of dye patch again so here the seabed slope is also given here now the angle between the shoreline and the geographic north so this is the angle and this is your geographic north and this is your shore normal. For example, if you look at uh, the Indian coast, so Indian coast is something like this and then it goes like this. So, the, so you see always uh, you have the cyclone and then the cyclone gets there and this is where you are having the Bay of Bengal. Okay. So something like this. So you see that this around Chennai, the here the angle is approximately say 16 degrees to 20 degrees okay but when you go somewhere further north maybe orissa etc so orissa visakhapatnam etc this may be around 50 to 60 degrees okay so this uh, angle has to be considered and when we have the wave direction wave direction is always with respect to geographic north. So, you see that so x is uh, the distance of the dye patch from the shoreline that is also indicated given here 
50 meters. So, bed slope is given the angle between the shore line and the geographic north is 65 degrees, the angle between the shore normal this is the shore normal and the geographic north will be this much that is 155. So, when you want to have the wave direction with respect to shore normal then you consider this angle okay this will be 180 minus 155 is that clear so so, uh, so this is uh, what uh, you have to uh, get depending on the angle indicated here you have to, you have to derive the angle with respect to shore normal so that is a basic uh, 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 basic requirement in order to evaluate the sediment transport rate. Now, energy flux method it shall uh, uh, I mean I have concise the whole thing in one uh, slide in order to have everything uh, there because already this problem has been explained to some extent. We are just looking into we are having a, a recourse to the same kind of a problem. So, you have the uh, PLS parameter. So, HSB is the wave height at the breaker height then g g g that is uh, the wave group is already at the breaking uh, uh, breaker point then alpha b all these things you must be knowing. So, you can calculate your uh, l b by t calculated in part a earlier also we have seen this you know how to calculate this because once the breaker height is known please have a look at uh, the details then the breaker angle is also can be calculated. So, breaker angle you have to assign whether coming from right as negative or coming from left as negative when you are standing on the shore okay. So, this is a conversion uh, this is the kind of uh, uh, coordinate axis you should have in mind before you start uh, doing it. So, you the angle has to be the direction has to be consider consistent. So, usually northerly drift they consider it as positive southerly drift they consider it as negative, but it is not hard and fast rule you can have, but be consistent. So, uh, so the breaker depth etcetera, so the breaker height is uh, calculated here as given here. So, what you have is uh, the H naught given is H naught this is only a sample calculation which is uh, given here. So, then uh, you can calculate all these things okay. So, for each of the method we can calculate. So, this is for the month of January and then this is for this is the alpha b for the month of January which is worked out here okay. So, for the month of January using all these variables you can calculate your PLS parameter and then because we are dealing with January month the actual uh, uh, actual uh, I mean uh, the quantity of sediment transport is 1290 into PLS okay that is for the sediment transport rate per year look at the formula again. But since we are dealing with the monthly transport that, that has to be divided by 12 that is why you have this 12 all other parameters variables etcetera you, you use the Snell's law okay and you use the breaker formula I mean to determine the breaker height you have a variety of formulas you can use any of those formulas depending on the kind of uh, uh, variables you have similar to what you have for PLS parameter. The PLS parameter depending on the kind of input data you have you choose the corresponding uh, formula. Uh, similarly, here also you can use the corresponding formula look at the uh, uh, chapter on or the topic on wave deformation for the details uh, diff different methods for estimating the uh, breaker height. So, here you see that uh, you have a uh, for similarly if you can work out for the different months this is what you will have uh, as indicated here. So, for every month you calculate and then you get the so first of what the procedures are find out the HSB or the HP then the celerity at the breaker point the everything at the breaker point because that is where the, the whole sediment transport is getting initiated. And then uh, your alpha b which controls the again the direction of the sediment transport and then that is being reflected here. So, then uh, you calculate your PLS parameter monthly uh, sediment transport and then you 
from which you can calculate your sediment transport as indicated here. So, you add all negative uh, uh, the ones uh, the magnitudes with the negative sign. So, that is going to give you the southerly transport and northerly transport here we have assumed that northerly transport is positive. So, you add up all the positive uh, values then you will get the northerly transport. So, the gross sediment is uh, just added at, at the both without the uh, sign the absolute uh, addition of absolute value of both the magnitudes will give the gross sediment transport and the net transport is with the direction. So, this clearly indicates that it is a northerly drift. So, along the east coast of India it is usually northern uh, it is uh, the net drift is northerly direction. So, this is a classical example which we have worked out or uh, this is a second example I am uh, I am working out because very often we have uh, students facing difficulty in evaluating the sediment transport state. Now, by the LEO observations the same uh, uh, you, you have to calculate the breaker wave height as uh, clearly indicated here using this formula and once you calculate the breaker wave height you know that the uh, breaker depth can be easily obtained using the relationship of uh, uh, HB equal to 0.78 times water depth and then uh, once uh, because here the beach slope is also given. So, 1 is to 80 that is the input. So, once you know that you can get the surf width parameter. So, surf width is approximately 200 meters here. So, the surf width is likely to change every month okay, because the, the monthly characteristics wave characteristics is going to change because the depth at which the wave is going to break is going to change and more or less within a month also it can change why even within a day also it can change. But what we are referring to is an, uh, an average estimate even within a day it is only an average estimate what you are going to have okay. So, the surf uh, width is already known and then uh, W is the width of the surf zone and X is already given to you as 50 meters and then use uh, so V Leo is also given to you uh, in the data. So, you have to obtain this uh, parameter and this parameter this is the uh, surf width and this is the surface and 50 is the distance of the dye patch using this equation you will get the value of value of about 0.3 and then substituting the PFR the PLS parameter all these variables are already given to you or already have already been discussed then substitute only all those values and then you will get the Q as shown here and this is typically for the month of January. And then so you repeat the calculations uh, as uh, I have stated here and so you will get the distribution of uh, the uh, monthly distribution of the sediment transport uh, and then also the corresponding northerly drift and the southerly drift and uh, the net drift as well as the gross drift. So, as uh, similar to what we have done in the earlier problem. So, this problem uh, shows you or demonstrates to you how we can use uh, both the methods. Uh, for uh, obtaining the uh, so the top figure or uh, top figure shows the variation of the PLS parameter just by multiplying it by a constant you are going to get the uh, sediment transport which is known, uh, shown in the bottom figure. So, as stated earlier it is not uh, the purpose is not to compare, but if you want you can still do that comparison okay. So, here I have just simply assumed a value of 50 for the for the surf width okay for the for the distance from the dye patch I have assumed and also the V Leo was also assumed we have not done any measurements okay. But suppose in case you are involved in such kind of a measurement and then the measuring exercise has to be sort of compared with some uh, available uh, method and that is what uh, has been demonstrated with the help of this problem. Is that uh, clear? I think uh, with this uh, I, I would uh, like to suggest that uh, some of these uh, 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 books uh, have been measured uh, have, have been uh, uh, referred and uh, there are semi many other uh, books. Uh, now, show production manual is a coastal engineering manual which gives a lot of information. 
and there are few things which I have not covered in this uh, uh, lecture. Uh, particularly, when you uh, this is this uh, lecture has uh, given you that if you have given you the information on wave height, wave period, and direction, how to evaluate the sediment transport rate. Is that that is very clear? But when we are dealing with a, 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 a practical problem, so for example, you want to do it for a coast, for maybe some coast, maybe along the east coast of India. Then you have to take the percentage of. So I have already explained the. Uh, wave rose diagram, right? Wave rose diagram we have already seen. So, which gives nothing but the percentage of occurrence of wave height with a particular direction. What is the percentage of wave height of this much range coming from this direction, coming from this direction, coming from this direction? That is nothing but the probabilistic, probabilistic description. of the wave climate. When you look at the probabilistic uh, uh, description of the wave climate, which is usually uh, uh, available for uh, offshore locations, sometimes uh, maybe for ports, etcetera, you might have some information uh, at the breaker zone. They would uh, refer to wave data for the port and they would normally call it as visually observed wave data. As I said earlier, this has to be treated as HSB, okay, straight away HSB. Suppose if you do not have that kind of a data, the other source of data is only the deep water data and this deep water data can be from weather charts, or wind data derived from wind or it can be visually observed data through ships, ship observed visually observed data. Uh, whatever may be the source of data, if you want to make use of that data, then finally it boils down to the brow, the way you get the data is will be in the form of wave rose diagram, or in the term of uh, in case uh, if it is in the term in the in in the way of uh, wave rose diagrams, this is uh, the way you need to represent your sediment transport rate. You understand? So what is the percentage of occurrence? of uh, 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 wave direction with this with a particular wave height okay then that is going to induce a certain percentage of occurrence of sediment transport of a certain magnitude and direction so if the wave is di in this direction naturally the northerly drift is going to take place for example in the month of january and what is its percentage no the so the percentage of occurrence have not been covered in this lecture, but I suggest you refer to one of these uh, particularly the shore protection manual or the uh, uh, coastal engineering manual for to have a, a better idea about how to deal with the percentage because that is going to be also of a relevant uh, maximum use for if you want to design, uh, uh, if you want to plan for any coastal structure for which the information on the littoral drift is needed. Okay. So, now what we will do is we will get into another topic which is quite relevant which is actually the driving force. So, we all know that the sediment transport is distributed within the surf zone. How it is distributed, do we need this information or not? Suppose if you are interested in finding out, uh, for example, if you want to put a, 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 a kind of a, a, a structure normal to the shore, a littoral barrier like a, a groin, for example then this information on how the distribution looks like 
So, this is the shoreline and this is the, towards the ocean. So, the distribution would be something like this, you understand? So, this may be the breaker zone, all right. And although, uh, although we have said that the near shore currents, like a, 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 in particular the cross shore currents and the littoral currents, I mean the long shore currents, are generated due to the waves breaking. Okay. Since it is breaking, you have these two currents. All right. Not only that, and it is existing mostly in the surf zone. It has been proved that it they are wave induced. They are wave induced because basically they are generated because of wave breaking. So when uh, once the waves are breaking, this is the shoreline. Once the waves are breaking, then you expect that the sediment transfer will be only within this region. Am I right? But there can be sediment transport even beyond the surface. There can be sediment distribution even beyond the surface. So that is a maximum of uh, twice the surface. You can still that is beyond the twice the surf width, you normally do not expect the sand to be moving due to wave induced currents. So, and also when you want to dredge certain area, the distribution becomes uh, quite important. Now, there has been a lot of work that has been done in this area. And uh, I will cover only the salient uh, informations, and uh, I may not go into the complete theoretical background because uh, I would uh, leave that to the students who are more interested. So again, uh, refer to the coastal engineering manual, which is the, which is which I can say is uh, the reference book for all informations dealing with coastal engineering. So wave induced uh, longshore currents at the mid surf zone. That is, you I have said the surf zone within the, the surf zone, you have the mid surf zone. So, again, I will draw the same figure. So, you will have assume that this is the kind of uh, current, and uh, so somewhere the, this is the breaker zone, for example. So, mid surf zone is within the this is the surf zone. So, V is at x by 2. So, mid surf velocity is given by as per suggested by Comar 1975. You go to the net and type coma, you get all the is articles, all those articles which are very, very interesting. So, this this is given by 2.7 into u max sin alpha into cos alpha alpha b and uh, here u max is nothing but half into comma b into celerity because it's in the shallow water so you can uh, and uh, gamma b is nothing but uh, is a constant value of about 0.78 that is nothing but the breaker index which we have already seen. So, and C is the validity of celerity in the shallow waters, alpha B is the breaker angle. So, you want to calculate the mid surf velocity, the formula is there, it is quite straightforward to. So, the only thing you need to calculate is the breaker angle from the deep water wave angle using Snell's law. That is the only thing, once you calculate that then it is just uh, having a calculator to calculate the velocity at the mid surf zone. So, computation of longshore currents, it should be noted that the above equation is independent of the beach slope. So, you look at this beach slope does not come into picture at all. 
although beach slope is not coming directly here, but uh, based on uh, beach slope only your uh, breaker depth also is uh, taking, taken care. Actually this 0.78 times uh, what it has is an empirical relationship. You go back and look at uh, the, uh, 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 have a look at the uh, topic on wave deformation on breaking, wherein one particular formula is uh, by uh, Dean and Dalrymple, which is uh, illustrated in Dean and Dalrymple book, wherein we considered the beach slope as well as the wave direction. When you use that formula in order to get the breaker index, you will see that it is going to be differing by about a point, it may be around 0 0.8 instead of 0.78. The, there may not be much uh, uh, huge difference. Though the long shot, so here it should be noted that the above equation is independent of the beach slope. Though the long shot current velocity formula recommended by CRC based on large and A is dependent on the beach slope. Okay. So, Komar has tested the dependence of the long shot current and it was stated that it is not directly proportional to the beach slope uh, as stated in the CRC formula. These are some of the running commentaries which you should have in mind. Okay. So, if you are really interested in this topic further, you have to go into the details. And uh, there are a variety of uh, other uh, formulas or other uh, uh, long shot current uh, uh, the velocities definitions as given here. What is happening within the surf zone? Within the surf zone, you can have mid surf velocity, which we have just now seen, as suggested by Kumar. The maximum uh, uh, velocity, long shot current velocity within the surf zone with no mixing, with no mixing. I will come back to that mixing later. Okay. Here you look at this uh, uh, parameter, C f is a friction co coefficient. We will be using uh, all these formulas to calculate uh, the velocities uh, for a typical uh, data at the end, so that uh, things will be quite clear. Okay. So, I suggest after, after the lecture, you just go through uh, the presentation, so I am sure that it should be clear. And in case you have still any doubts, you please come back to me or refer to coastal engineering manual or the shore protection manual for details. So, uh, d b is given, then uh, this uh, epsilon here indicates that is, this is uh, something like a correction factor. Okay. This, in, uh, this includes uh, the friction, uh, the breaker index as shown here and all other parameters are already known to you. So, this is the maximum current velocity within the surf zone. The other, uh, uh, other uh, formula is the velocity for at the breaker position. So, at the breaker position you see that you have uh, uh, m 1, then uh, m is the uh, 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 beach slope, the other parameters are given, only m n is indicated here as shown here. Again this is a kind of a friction factor then you have a mixing, little mixing, complete mixing. See lit, little mixing or complete mixing is something like uh, you have a, when the waves are breaking, you have a, a lot of uh, churning action going on. You will have a very good mixing or, or you may not have. So, this basically depends on the sand particle size at that particular location plus the beach slope as well as the wave characteristic. Why beach slope and wave characteristics come into picture? Because mixing also depends on the type of wave breakers. Okay. Type if it is spilling, you may not have much of, if you have spilling type of breakers, you cannot expect much of uh, uh, mixing. But if it is going to be uh, uh, plunging, you see that there is lot of turbulence that is going to occur at the breaker zone. And then uh, when you have a lot of turbulence taking place, then uh, you have very good uh, mixing. So, but uh, breakers, the type of breakers basically depend on what? Tan beta divided by wave steepness. 
recollect uh, my lecture on uh, uh, wave, wave breakers, types of wave breakers. So, tan beta is a beach slope and then the uh, square root of h naught by L naught that is the deep water wave steepness or the wave steepness at the breaker zone. So, this depends on, so, so this will take care, this will uh, depend on the site conditions whether you have a mixing or no not much of a mixing. So, you, you can either use uh, this is 0.17, this is 0.17 and uh, this is 0.5, <coughs> you can use uh, uh, depending on the uh, on the kind of site conditions. This above equation has been uh, applied successfully for the Kerala coast by Sahul Amid et al in 86 and there are a number of uh, studies reported using some of these formulas for <coughs> for determining the current velocities along uh, Chennai coast, Paradip coast, coast Visakhapatnam coast, most of the coast along uh, our, along the along uh, India. So, you have a lot of literature available uh, for uh, such uh, studies. So, then uh, within the surf zone you have also the mean velocity that is given by as uh, V bar and that is also given by Longe Dickens and uh, this is uh, given here. So, now you see there are four different types of uh, formula uh, four different kinds uh, of velocities uh, used for describing the longshore current velocities uh, within the surf zone. One is the mid surf zone, uh, mid surf velo velocity, the next is the maximum uh, velocity, third is uh, at the breaker location at the breaker point and finally, you have the mean velocity. So, please remember although you have so many formulas, uh, I would uh, uh, ask you okay, you can use any of these formulas for uh, either uh, it might be difficult for you to remember all these formulas. So, we will decide whether uh, uh, you will be allowed to bring some of these formulas for your examination or otherwise, okay. we will take a decision later. But what is more important is uh, not just the formulas. You should understand when it is breaker velocity, you should know where, where the breaker velocity is taking place. So, the application of formula is much more important than the formula itself. Are there any doubts? Now, we look into the distribution of longshore currents and sediment transport rates across the surf zone. This involves a number of formulae. I do not want you students to remember all these formulas, but certainly you need to know how all these formulas can be adopted for a given site, for given data values. So, there are some theoretical uh, uh, the, the theoretical background for the distribution of the longshore currents within the surf zone has been obtained from the solution of a Comar. There are a number of articles by Comar, number of publications. So, if you are again interested, you can download all this, all most of this, his publications are available in the net. So, if you are interested, you can download and read it by yourself. So, there are we will be dealing with a number of constants and how are these constants evaluated? These constants are functions of a number of parameters within the that represent the near shore environment. So, the first one is V by capital V, uh, capital V is V small divided by V naught that is V is the velocity at any location. So, suppose if this is x which is the surf width. So, let me call this as x b. Now, this is okay. Now, capital V is equal to small v 
divided by p naught that is what is indicated. What it means is it is nothing but this x b this on the x axis it is x divided by x b. X b is the surface. You know this value before you get started with the distribution of uh, the current velocity. So x b is fixed for a particular month, say, or for a, for a particular day. So surface is fixed, and I get x at the every location. So this will be x1, somewhere here will be x2, etc., up to xn. For each of this x value, I will have uh, the velocity that is calculated. This velocity I have to calculate. Is that clear? But uh, this is already calculated, which is going to be a constant that is nothing but your v naught which is the maximum velocity. What we are trying to do is instead of uh, simply presenting uh, 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 v by small x, we are just dimensionalizing it with uh, maximum velocity and the surface. Okay. If you want you can also dimensionalize it with uh, instead of uh, this one you can also present the other way divided by v b. Okay. No, no, that is if you want to present, but this formula is valid for this kind of uh, 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 representation. Is that clear? So, this maximum velocity, the parameters involved in the maximum velocity have already been explained to you. So, now you look at the values, I mean the variables. We have variables p1, p2, b1 b2 Pardon? and then you also have e a, but the capital X and capital V is going to be varying, X is going to be varying and you are going to compute a capital V. Once you do that you are getting the distribution, is that clear? Now, all these parameters need to be calculated, these constants. How do you calculate all these constants? That is what is given here. So, all the formulas are given here, wherein uh, pi e, p equal to pi into this one, this is beach slope, and this breaker index, this is a coefficient, and this is something to do with the mixing, which we will be uh, looking into in detail later and then all other things are known. Once you calculate your p, then you can calculate p1, p2. The main thing you need to calculate immediately is the first step is to calculate capital P. Capital P is the one which connects your beach slope and the breaker index. Okay. Once you calculate this, see this, this is not very tedious. Only thing is you have to use the formulas carefully. Once this is done, then use this to calculate P1 and P2. Now, once you calculate this, the next step would be to calculate epsilon. Is that clear? Once you calculate P and epsilon, you can calculate all other parameters because P1 is straight away got here P2, then A, B1 is once you calculate P1 and P2. Then you and as well as A, you can calculate B1 and B2. Once that is done, you can substitute in the equation to get your capital V and capital V naught, sorry, capital V that is V by V naught, and that is this is the area within the surf zone, and this is one slightly beyond the surf zone. Beyond the surf zone, if you use this, you will see that the beyond the surf zone the value will keep on decreasing. So, how does it vary we will see with the help of. So, yeah I am coming to that. So, in the above equation I will explain when I am dealing with the problem. Okay. 
So, in the above equation m is the beach slope and C f is the drag coefficient which increases proportionally with an increase in the beach slope. So, but Komar has stated that beach slope the ratio of beach slope to the friction coefficient is a constant. So, I will not go into the details of uh, these things the profile of onshore current obtained using the above solution depends on the dimensionless parameter capital P that is this one that is in equation representing the relative importance of horizontal heady mixing and uh, the larger the value of uh, uh, P more important is its effect. So, now So, here this is the beach slope and this is the friction factor. So, the P is going to control the kind of a sediment transport distribution that is likely to take place within the surf zone. That is it is in some way or other controlling the extent of mixing that is supposed to take place within the surf zone. Okay. So, uh, I suggest if you are interested you can just look at uh, some of the parametric study if you want to do some kind of a parametric study you can still do that. The coefficient n in the expression for p that is what you were asking just now uh, is a numerical constant varying between 0 to 0 0.016. Inclusion of horizontal mixing couples the water outside the breaker zone to the flow within the surf zone producing longshore current even beyond the surf zone without discontinuity at the breaker line. This is what I explained in the just now in the beginning that is although the currents longshore currents are thought to be due to the waves breaking only when the waves break at the breaker zone you have and also the oblique angle attack oblique I mean oblique uh, wave angle attack uh, uh, oblique waves because only if the uh, waves are approaching with an angle to the shore normal you will have the longshore current velocity which we have already uh, seen. Okay. So, you need to have <coughs> so you have the uh, shoreline you have the So, the waves will be coming in this direction this is the shore normal. So, this is the angle only when it is breaking somewhere here you will have a component the component of this is in this direction and you will have another component in this direction and this component is called as the longshore current velocity which we have already seen. So, we will be under the impression that the longshore current velocity is concentrated only within the surf zone that is not exactly true. You also can have the current velocity slightly outside the surf zone okay. and that is what it explains and now when you look at the distribution the formula for the distribution longshore current velocity you saw that there was one this extends up to this up to 1 and 0 you had one formula and from 1 to infinity. So, if it is greater than 1 you will see that the velocity longshore current velocity will reduce drastically but there will still be some amount of longshore current velocity the magnitude will be there. Once a suitable value of P has been selected to define the overall shape of the profile that is the beach profile because P basically takes care of the beach profile you understand. So, once you select the overall shape of the profile the value of C f corresponding to the beach slope can be obtained. So, this I would suggest you refer to 
this uh, uh, information, some of these informations are available. I am not going to go into the details of this. So, I will stop here and then proceed uh, with other things. Uh, are there any doubts till now? So, I think I will stop here. So, that uh, uh, next class we will just again look at the other, uh, other aspects and also we will uh, work out a problem on the uh, long term current velocity distribution and uh, with that we will move on to other chapters. <coughs>